bell work for today. Uh, yesterday we talked about those negative exponents, and then if you have a ticket, you get to move across the fra fraction bar. So take a couple minutes and try this. Also, if you haven't turned your homework in, which I think you all did yesterday, um, turn that in um, while you're doing your bell work. Okay, so let's see how we did on this. Uh, remember, negative exponent is your ticket to cross the fraction bar. So on this first one here, remember that it's already over 1. So to simplify it, we're just going to move it to the bottom. And remember, if you move across the fraction bar, you get to turn in your ticket. So now that becomes on the bottom 1 over 3 squared, which you could change to 1 ninth. On the second one, remember, if you don't have a ticket, you don't get to move. So a squared does not have a ticket. It does not get to move. It has to stay there as a squared. But b to the negative fourth, it does have a ticket in the bottom. So it's a ticket to move up. So that becomes b to the fourth, which means there's nothing left in the bottom. You could say a 1 in the bottom, but really, remember, we don't really say there's a 1 in the bottom because we don't leave answers with a 1 over them. So I would say that should be the best answer. On the third one here, they used to get a little bit more complicated each time. If you don't have a ticket, you don't get to move. 2 does not have a ticket. A does not have a ticket. But B and C both have a ticket. If you have a ticket, you get to cross the fraction bar. If you don't have a ticket, you got to stay there. So B to the negative 3 gets to go to the bottom and turn in its ticket. And C to the negative 6 is going to come up top and turn in its ticket. No like terms, so we're going to leave our answer like that. Okay? Questions about that? All right. I have some notes for you. So uh, the sub can go ahead and pass out the notes that I've left. And then um, I will start these notes. If I start before everyone gets them, then go ahead and uh, pause the video and unpause it when you're ready. So this is our last day for exponents. Uh, tomorrow we're going to review for a little bit and then have a quiz. Um, yesterday we talked about negative exponents. Today we're going to use all the properties of exponents together and learn a couple new properties. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to review and have a quiz. And why should you learn this? Well, exponent rules will help us pass the ECA. I wrote May here, but that's from last year. I should say December. So let's just jump in here, kids. We went over those rules earlier in the week. When do we multiply? When do we divide? But there's one other rule I haven't given you, which is called the exponent to an exponent rule. If you have a power to a power, an exponent right next to an exponent, you're going to multiply those. So a to the x to the n is a to the x times n. So in words, we can say when an exponential term itself gets raised to an exponent, we keep the base the same, and we multiply the exponents. So 2 to the 3 to the 5, the 2 is going to stay the same, but I'm going to multiply 3 times 5 and get 15. So take a second and try number 2 and number 3. Let's see what we got here x to the y to the u is x to the y u. And then how about this one? a to the negative 5 to the 4. I'm still going to multiply these, and I'm going to get a to the negative 20th. But remember what we did yesterday. You can't leave a negative in your answer, a negative exponent. So we have to cash in our ticket and move to the bottom of the fraction. So you really should say 1 over a to the 20th. So before you turn in your homework today, make sure you look and that you don't have any negative answers left on there. Okay? 
moving on. Putting it all together. Some of the problems today you're going to use multiple rules on. If you see an exponent to an exponent, which means if you see parentheses, just like order of operations, you're going to want to deal with those first. Then you can kind of switch two and three around in which order you want, just like we talked about yesterday. I like to deal with the negative exponents next because um, I think people make less mistakes. But if you're okay with negatives, then you could just do step three, which is combine like bases by either adding or multiplying or subtracting the exponents. So look at number four here. These are all A's. Before we start doing anything, I think you have to do the ones with parentheses. So if I do a to the 2 to the 3, remember that that's a to the 6. a to the 0, what's anything to the 0 power? 1. So that's just 1. So I'm just going to kind of forget about it. And then I have a to the negative 3. And again, here's where I say you have a couple options. One option is when we multiply letters with the same base, we add their exponents, which means we could just add across here. We could say 4 plus 6 is 10, and 10 plus negative 3 is going to give me a to the 7th. And that works. That kind of skips my step 2 here. Just to show you, I could have also said, oh, this has a ticket, so I'm going to move it to the bottom. Oh, I forgot the a. And then I would get a to the tenth on the top. And remember, when we divide with the same base, we subtract. And 10 minus 3 would give me a to the seventh. That definitely seems like more work. And so in a problem like this, maybe um, just adding is okay. So let's look at number 5 and see if we can do the same thing. Again, anytime you see end of the zero, they throw that in there because they know some people are going to think that it's zero. But remember that this is just one, so it really doesn't change anything. You can kind of just ignore it. But you've got to deal with these parentheses first. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And again, we could either turn our ticket in now or we can wait till later. I don't know which way you're choosing since I'm not here to hear you discuss this. But if we do it like we did the other one, when we multiply, we add. So negative 7 plus negative 8 is negative 15. But that's not your final answer because you have to turn your ticket in. So I have to cash in my negative and get 1 over m to the 15th. That would be my final answer. Oh man, they're getting more complicated. Let me kind of walk you through number six and then see if you can do number seven. Again, if you see parentheses, you have to do that first. Um, this is where I like to switch my negatives around too. So again, more than one way to do this, but I'm going to deal with this first and get x to the negative eighth. On the bottom, I'm going to get x to the 12th, because 3 times 4 is 12. And then I have negative 5. I'm going to turn my tickets in, because people make negative mistakes. You don't have to. If you want to just start adding or subtracting, I'm okay with that. But I want to show you what I like to do. If it has a negative, it gets across the fraction bar. So x to the negative 3 has a ticket. It gets to go to the bottom and become x to the 3rd. x to the negative 8 has a ticket. It gets to go to the bottom and become x to the 8th. x to the 12th has no ticket. It has to stay where it is on the bottom. But x to the negative 5th has a ticket to move up. So I'm going to move it up to the top of the problem here. So on the top, I got nothing but x to the 5th. But on the bottom, these are all um, exponents. They're all x's as a base. So I'm just going to add those. And I think we're going to get 23 x to the 23. I'm still not done because I have an x in the bottom and an x in the top. My last step is I'm going to subtract these. And 5 minus 23 
is negative 18. Is that my final answer? No, because I can't leave a negative exponent, right? I got to move that down. So that's going to become 1 over x to the 18th. And get that as my answer. So try number seven. I'll be quiet for a minute. What are we doing on this? Step one, parentheses, c to the negative 20th, c to the negative 3, on the bottom, c to the 7, c to the 3 to the 4, is c to the 12th. Again, there's different order that you can do this in as long as you're not breaking any rules. This isn't the only way to do this problem. But I know people make mistakes with negatives, so that's why my next step is to cash in my tickets. If you have a ticket, you get to move across the fraction bar. So on the top, both of these have tickets, so they get to move to the bottom. C to the 20th, C to the 3rd. They turn in their ticket. But what about what's in the bottom? Does C to the 7th or C to the 12th get to move to the top? No, they don't have tickets. So C to the 7th, C to the 12th. It also stays down there. So what's left on top? Nothing? A one, right? So don't forget that. Don't just move it to the top. What happens when we put all this together? 30, 42, C to the 42 on the bottom. One over C to the 42 should be your answer on that. So it's kind of putting it all together. On your quiz tomorrow, there's definitely going to be some questions like this, but there'll also be some easier questions. Um, we'll review for a little bit. I'll have another recording for you tomorrow, uh, and then you'll take the quiz tomorrow. So one more thing before we uh, stop today is the product or quotient to an exponent. This is kind of like distributing, but not really, in that if you have something with an exponent on the outside, you have to give that exponent to everything. So it says, when a product or quotient gets raised to an exponent, each term in the parentheses gets raised to that exponent. So. If this has an exponent on the outside, we have to give that exponent to everything on the inside. So it becomes x to the n, y to the n. And on the, uh, the d division, same thing. That goes to the top and it goes to the bottom. We do really well with this with letters, but we tend to forget to give them to numbers. And so let's practice a few of these and make sure we have this down before we uh, start our homework. So all of these are products or quotients to a power, and we're just going to give that power to everything on the inside. So number 8, I'm going to say that's m to the 5th, n to the 5th. Number 9, we could just say multiply 2 times 3 and get 6, but we're going to say that's 2 to the x times 3 to the x. You follow me on this one? Same thing with division. That's going to be c to the negative 7 over e to the negative 7. Can I leave my answer like that? No, because there's negative exponents, so I have to turn in my ticket. So that becomes e to the 7th on the top, c to the 7th on the bottom. And the last one is just a number one. 3 to the 5th 
over 4 to the 5th. And again, you could actually take those to the 5th power, but I'm kind of just checking that you got this down. How do you feel about this? That's all I have for you, uh, besides the worksheet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write the numbers up here so that when you get it, you'll know what to do. There are two sides to this, uh, so I'm just going to use the page numbers. On one side, it says page 27, and it's kind of using the, the power to a power rule and the simplifying, which definitely the bottom part of these take a little extra t work. And remember to only give positive answers, positive exponents. So if you have a negative exponent, you have to move it to the bottom. So let's do... Let's see here. On the top section is 1 through 20. Let's do even. So on the top 1 through 20, you're going to just do the evens, which shouldn't be so bad to do. On the bottom section, which is 1 through 20 also, I want you to just do multiples of 4, which means you're just going to do 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. Maybe a good idea is to go ahead and pause the video and pass out the worksheets so students can circle which ones they're supposed to do. So if everyone has a worksheet now, just a reminder, on page 27 at the top, that says use exponent to exponent rule to simplify these terms, you're going to just do evens, 2 through 20 evens. And then on the bottom, you're going to do just these five problems. And then turn the page over to page 28. Again, the top is using the product to exponent rule, the last row I showed you. So for 1 through 10 there, I want you to do evens. 2 through 10, I guess. And on the bottoms, make sure you give that exponent on the outside to everything. And let's do um, multiples of 3 on the bottom. So the 1 through 30, I want you to do multiples of three. So look at me making you do math to figure problems out. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, and thirty. So before you just start jumping in here, make sure you have which problems marked to do. Ask for help if you need it. There are people in here that should be able to help you. This is for a grade, so make sure you work on it diligently. And um, the sub can just go ahead and pause this video, and this, these numbers will stay up here even after it's paused that uh, you can still see it. Okay? When you're done, you can go ahead and turn it in, uh, and tomorrow we'll review and we will have a quiz.